All right, welcome back to the series of series or series of series, series versus parallel. All right, okay. Still remember what is the key component that concept we're looking for? Same path, and here is different path. Okay. The previous video, I showed you how does the current behaves when it goes through components that are connected in series and components connected in parallel. Today, we're going to look, go a bit further and study what about the potential difference. Okay, all right. So this is what we're covering today. Okay, so first, series. Okay, so we know that, let's say if they're on the same path, Right, and we have one current that is going through. Okay, the current will be the same throughout. Okay, so let me just write this down here. I two, I three, and I four. So we learn that I one equals to I two equals to I three equals to I four. Okay, all right. What if we connect voltmeters across? Right, call this V one. V2 and V3, all right? What is the relationship, okay? Does V1 equals to V2 equals to V3, all right? The answer is not necessary, okay? Each potential difference is actually dependent on the resistance, okay? It goes by, again, our Ohm's law, right? Okay? But if I were to connect an overarching voltmeter here, V4, alright, that cuts across, that goes across all three resistors. V1 plus V2 plus V3 is equals to V4. That is how potential difference uh, behaves in resistors connected in series, alright? Okay, so you can see over here the opposite, okay? So the last time when we learned about current in a parallel circuit, they split up, they combine, we say that I1 equals to I2 plus I3 plus I4. But over here you see V1 plus V2 plus V3 equals to V4. But yet the current is all the same. Okay, okay now let's look at the parallel side. So if we have the different pathways, path one, okay, pardon you, let me switch to the ping. You know, ping is better. Right? Okay, so let's call this A, B, C again, all right? We have our I1. Can you still see? All right, it's still in the frame, right? Okay, I2, I3, and I4 is I5. So we learned the last time that I1 is equals to I2 plus I3 plus I4, and all of them, they comes out to be the same as I5, okay? Right? So if we were to do the same thing, connecting voltmeters across each resistors to understand about the potential difference, it looks like this. It may look a bit complicated, but we are just trying to find what is their potential difference. So one voltmeter, another voltmeter, and a third voltmeter. So it doesn't really matter where I place this. I can have this bracket as big as this. All right. It is still the same. What really matters is what lies between the bracket. Okay, so in this case, how potential difference behave in a parallel fashion, okay, all right, is that V1 will be equals to V2 will be equals to, ew, sorry. Okay, the human wiper, okay, equals to V3, you see? This two is the same, all right? So the potential difference to go across each of the resistors connected in parallel, they are all the same, okay? So this is a similar concept. Some of you might play, I think what, Nintendo DS or, or what, or you, you play some of the like racing games, and sometimes they hit a junction, it goes different paths, okay? But whether, what, no matter which path you take, technically you are using the same amount of effort, okay, all right? Then the difference will be, are you going to, you know, go yeah faster or slower? But the amount of effort is actually the same. Okay, so you see over here, 
you see the contrast, right? Series, current goes through is the same, but potential difference is dependent on the resistors. And all of them add together will give you the overall potential difference across everything. Okay? Whereas in parallel, when they hit a junction, the current splits up, but you all come back to be the same. Yet, potential difference across each of them is actually the same. So do you see the parallel between this? Wow. See you next time.